all so much for joining us today. We are the team formerly known as Abstract, and we have picked uh, antibiotic resistance as our project. Uh, when it first got brought up pretty early in the process, uh, several of us had had at least some level of exposure to it in other courses, and so we thought it was something we could really get behind. Um, it turns out that you know, antibiotic resistance is a big problem. Uh, it's been in the news a lot lately, 23,000 deaths last year, almost 2 million uh, infections, over $20 billion cost to healthcare industry, and that's been growing. It was like 14,000 in 2009 or something like that. So it's a problem that's been getting worse. Uh, the way we chose to address it is through trying to get people to adhere to their prescriptions better. There's a lot being done in stewardship programs and attempts to uh, doctors prescribing better, uh, incentivizing new methods, and we thought that the best way we would be able to tackle it is to target uh, people that are already been prescribed their antibiotics and aren't finishing them, uh, because that's a particularly bad problem with our age group. It was over 50% of people that didn't finish their antibiotics in the age group of 18 to 24 did so because they felt better. And so that's the way we chose to try to do this. Um, and so now we're going to explain a little bit more how we're planning on doing that. Uh, so we put this together to show sort of the evolution of the project also. We started looking at reminder systems, moved on to the idea of doing a blister pack that would have some information that got rolled out as the logistics became too complicated. Um, so now we're doing a two-tiered approach. We're trying to target smaller pharmacies with stickers that would go on the top of pill bottles, like you see, um, that would encourage people to finish the, their course of their antibiotics. Um, and then we are hoping to uh, convince CVS to put some sort of graphic on the back of their bags that would educate people about antibiotic resistance and encourage them to finish. Um, for the, the sticker campaign, uh, we've gone We've been sort of kicking around a bunch of slogans. Um, the one that we seem to like the best is Finish Strong. Uh, finishing this bottle helps save 23,000 lives every year. Um, and then for the CVS bag, we've actually gotten a designer on board who's helping us work with it. Um, these are some preliminary designs that I can pull these off and yeah. show them to you. Um, we, this was the first round. We had a meeting with him this weekend, and we picked back a couple of ideas. Um, <coughs> these around, but the graphic with the pill bottle is the one that he gravitated towards. So we sent it back to him and asked him to work on a graphic with that pill bottle and the slogan that I wrote on the sticky note over there, um, which I now can't read to you because I just handed it over, so sorry about that. <laughs> all, all of these words would appear on it? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, well, that's the product. So, yeah. so the steps we've taken to validate whether this can actually have an impact um, so for our, um, in, in America, four out of five Americans are prescribed antibiotics every year. So that's a lot of people. Um, CVS, they already have actually, um, so they're rebranding right now as CVS Health. So they have a ton of new um, initiatives that they're taking on to improve community-based health. Um, and one of their initiatives is um, targeting adherence. So far, they've only been targeting chronic diseases. So um, getting people that have to take their antibiotic or take uh, some like diabetes medicine or whatever it is, heart disease, every day for the rest of their lives. Um, but they have not yet um, focused on short-term things like antibiotics. Um, and they are actually looking at new ways to um, rebrand their packaging to um, do this and to enc encourage people to actually adhere to their doctor's prescriptions. Um, so we think that CBS will is a, is a really good partner in that. Um, and they also, they fill 750 million prescriptions every year. So um, there's a large uh, market out there to, or a large group of people out there that we could actually impact through these bags. Uh, and then additionally, we also have a, a survey that we sent out that we're still um, analyzing the results for. Um, but we have, so far we've had over 300 responses and we've asked them things from um, just gauging their knowledge of the problem of antibiotic resistance, of whether they think it's important to finish their antibiotics, of um, what will happen when they don't finish their antibiotics, and we're going to use, yeah, why they stop, and we're going to use that information to um, help workshop our um, slogans in the coming week before we uh, deliver our final product. Are you going to say more about the survey later? 
We can. <laughs> Which wasn't true as part of the presentation. Yeah, no, we just we actually just sent out the survey like a week or two ago, or a week ago. Less than a week ago. Like Less than a week ago. So we still have, we are just getting in the data now. So we're planning on analyzing that um, as soon as we have access to it. And then um, we're going to use that to influence our final product. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about now who, who our target market is. Uh, specifically, as Colin mentioned, our target market is people who are taking antibiotics and they stop. And he said the main, and one of the main reasons is 50% is because they don't finish, uh, I mean, because they feel better. So while with our, with our stickers and our bag, we're, we're reaching everyone who is using antibiotics, whether they finish it or not. So we're, we're, how are, we can actually specialize to the target market uh, effectively is with the sticker campaign. So we could have a variety of different stickers based on what we determine it will um, best reach our market. So for example, uh, based on age, we realize that the people aged 18 to 24, our age is most likely to stop taking again to antibiotics. We could use like a cultural reference or some sort of uh, messaging that gets specific to them. Also with our survey, which like we said, the results aren't ready yet. Uh, we, we had one of the questions was like, what would be the most motivating to you to, con uh, to con continue finishing your antibiotics? And we gave like a list of like 10 things and they were supposed to pick their top three. So whether it's um, the financial cost to you, the financial cost to society, or the, the, how it could impact uh, your life, your friend, family's life, or whatever message specifically spoke to them. Uh, and what we really like about our stickers is that if you conform to the idea that like, we're in an uh, attention economy and people don't really like pay attention to all the marketing and all the messaging at them, and because they, they, they don't, they like blur it out. Like a sticker is inherently playful and unassuming, so they're more likely to give it a, a chance and actually read it and actually see what it has to say versus like some memo or something. And the, the bag on the end, so the sticker, we have a lot of different variations and a lot of flexibility on what the design is, while the bag would just be, I guess, one design that we ultimately agree on, except, but it would be a more comprehensive thing in that it would be an image, an easily digestible image of the complex issue of antibiotic resistance and how the, and how that happens, and it'd be in a simple image that anyone can understand. And so the main thing with our target market is, that, is the idea of when we're targeting them. And we're targeting them at a critical moment when they're actually buying the antibiotics and therefore more like, most likely to use them and make a decision of whether or not to continue. We're taking it at like the most prime time for them to actually like, when they're actually making the decision of whether or not to continue, they have our information and suggestion like readily accessible. Yeah, so once we have the two designs down, uh, based on the crit and based on the final project progression, um, engage with our audience through uh, local pharmacies. So we found there, uh, there are 19 um, TV-based pharmacies in D.C. we want to target. Um, aside from that, there are also about five or six uh, main local pharmacies in Georgetown area we want to target too. So we've already had conversations with the Georgetown Pharmacy here, um, and they told us that they like the idea, but they don't need it because they already have stickers themselves that do the same thing. So it just validates our idea saying that people are using this in pharmacies to remind people to take their medication and follow their adherence. Um, so moving forward, you wanna definitely um, get these two uh, designs for the bag and for the sticker sent to local and national pharmacy chains. And then from there, we're gonna um, probably bring about like 10 samples or 10 stickers for them to sample it um, on their actual medication bottles for the local and national pharmacies and see if it works. And so we can get feedback from them um, based on the customer um, adherence level. So if they've called back saying they need to get medication refills because they uh, uh, went through the medication uh, bottles, then we know the, med uh, we know the, the I guess the awareness of the topic has reached them and it has worked. Um, and I guess we could also you know, create surveys and um, uh, social media campaigns to kind of judge and more engage the audience and see whether or not they're really taking charge or taking hold of this whole campaign. So all the medication adherence. Um, aside from that, we already had conversations with a local pharmacy called Morgan Care. Um, we want to follow up with them sometime this week once we have more uh, ideas on what we want to design for the actual stickers and see if they can actually work with us um, in person to uh, implement one of the sticker ideas onto their um, bottles. And I think that's about it for our engagement strategy. Um, yes, yeah, so another reason why we steered away from like education campaigns or propaganda was we wanted to work with pharmacies because um, we thought we could reach more people that way instead of doing a campaign by ourselves. So we narrowed our scope down to just the stickers and the bags. And in terms of the content of the stickers, we wanted to um, disrupt patients' medicine taken routine through these high impact, concentrated, um, this entry point. Um, and through this, change the way people think about taking antibiotics. 
So by associating the antibiotics with slogans like finish strong, follow through, another one we're considering is don't settle for half healthy, but yeah. Um, and so these slogans are bold and positive and actionable. And um, using these slogans, I think, would help disassociate, um, dissociate um, antibiotics from medicine you take as a chore and instead make finishing your prescription desirable. And so by changing people's attitudes and perceptions, we could increase adherence to antibiotics. So we look at other social campaigns which were successful previously and find out most of the campaign they use the social media as a tool to spread their opinion which is uh, not the same as our way. So uh, we found out most of stickers on the labels, they usually only have a black and white and maybe red for logo like the CBS one. And uh, so we are gonna make it much colorful like blue or green or something and with very strong slogan like finish strong or something and uh, to get more attention to make people to finish it very to finish strong or to finish a prescription and CDC tobacco campaign which is very successful because they use the real people and real stories to talk about their what they want to do and to emphasize the credibility and uh, but the antibiotic is not as uh, very hazardous as tobacco so we are gonna use the our strategy is to use the uh, like the slogan just to finish this pill because if you didn't finish the pill you will maybe you will generate more Marsa the super bug something so yeah that's that's what we look at the example yeah <coughs> yeah we'd like to invite you guys down to give us some <laughs> critiques on that and to answer any questions you want guys I'm sure you guys have lots of questions start, start. Oh. Wait. <laughs> please <laughs> um, so I, I have to confess at first I was not enamored with the idea of the bottle sticker when you guys first mentioned it. But as I sit here looking at this, this actually this catches my eye way more than I thought it would. Um, it disrupts the sort of visual feel around the bottle chunk in a way that I think I find pretty persuasive. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with physical location, but also color, right? I mean, we talk in class about like rhetoric and color and color theory and stuff, and like that's actually a way to sort of persistently make an interruption in the visual field, um, right? Like color clash. Um, so like it's not just about the blue, it's the blue and the orange in the bottle that does something together. Um, on the other hand, I'm curious about uh, your intentions and your goals with the CVS bag. Like on the one hand, it's I think dynamite that they're rebranding. This is like this is a moment, right? Strike while the iron is hot. They're like open to suggestion in a way that they wouldn't be in another moment. Um, but when you buy, when you pick up your prescription, you throw the bag away within like what at most a couple hours. Like often I just like crumble the damn thing up and just throw the bottles in my backpack and, and roll, right? So I'm curious about like what your sense of what will happen with that bag is in terms of like impact and effect. Do you have anything? Yeah. Cool. Um, so the main reason that we looked at the bag with CVS is because it's such a large scale operation that we wanted to make sure it didn't incur them extra cost and that it didn't mess with their workflow. Um, so doing stickers with CVS where they have to figure out how to get them out to all of their pharmacies, how to get their people to put them on the bag, how to deal with all of that, and then pay for the stickers would be a significant barrier for them adopting it. Well, since they already have bags, they already print things on the bags, we called the company that they like, that handles their account and we asked them how difficult it would be to change and they said you just send us a new PDF and we put it on there. Um, Without even telling CVS. <laughs> 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 we, we already tried that. <laughs> lower as many barriers as we could for them actually adopting it. Um, so, you know, our biggest concern is that you just throw away the bag, but we figure you'll read it once if it's a new graphic. It still has the CVS, you know, trying to use the CVS branding, it still has the authority of mm. CVS behind it. I would suggest that you make the design for it catch enough that, like, either it catches your attention before you throw it away, or it's nice enough to make you like not want to. I think you throw away bags mm. right away because you don't have them 
on it. And you, can, like, you still might throw it away if there's some sort of design that's better, but you might hold on to it longer, at least like, pay attention to it first. Like that, I would throw it. Yeah, I think that's, that's part of our goal <laughs> is to get it, like, I mean, literally one side, all it says is CVS Pharmacy. And so with some of the, the design idea is to, even if we do just get them once, we want it to be something that they see when they first get the bag and they will at least look at it and read it once and get it. Hopefully their doctor has also mentioned this to them and it's just a reinforcement. I'm um, going back to what Michael was saying, we did some research in the successful tobacco campaigns and point of sale marketing was a very big component of like anti-smoking and people were much more perceptive to the anti-smoking uh, things when it was done at point of sale. And so that's kind of what we're thinking with this, is you're connecting, like this is a bag you get when you give them the money for the prescription. Like I literally got this bag earlier today and saw people in front of me getting the bag as they gave their money. So we're hoping to connect it that way, and that's why we're hoping that we'll get them at least the once when they're first getting this information, when they're hopefully making their decision as to how they're going to proceed. So, Rebecca, who did you say you talked to at CVS about the bag? Oh, yeah, um, that's Caitlin. Actually, Caitlin talked to uh, yeah. the, the distributor of the bag. So, CVS uses a, a different distributor called Ronpack. And so, I called um, Ronpack and I spoke with um, someone from there about the process, about how long it would take to implement a new PDF, things like that. I, I also I do think it's a brilliant strategy to, to figure out how to integrate into their existing workflow. Um, but I think there there could be a longer term plan if you if you're using the stickers in other instances to prove the validity of that shows you know use that as an entry point into CBS and ultimately get them to adopt other workflows down the road. Um, you know, you're, it's unlikely to get them to change overnight, but if they bite on that idea, there's a chance they'll bite on something else if you prove the concept. So I wanted to get a little clearer on the statistics because I heard a couple of different things. <clears throat> um, so I heard 18 to 24 year olds and I heard 50% not finishing and I heard not finishing because they felt better. Can somebody put those three, three numbers together for me? I couldn't tell if it was 50% of the people who did stop, stopped because that's, that's they the felt better. Yes. That, that did 50% of 18 to 24 year olds do that? 45% uh, of 18 to 24 year olds did not finish their antibiotic prescription, and then it's over 50% of the reason of those people that did not finish it is because they felt better. Got it, so, and you do, one of your ideas is to sort of target the 18 to 24 year old? That was, oh, sorry, it's gonna be this one. <laughs> yes, I mean, why didn't we talk to 18 Just to 24? Just because the, 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 they're um, the largest demographic to not complete their antibiotics at the 45%. So the 55% of others is spread over a lot of age groups, it's not the elderly, is that for instance? Okay. Yeah, it's just the rest is all spread out. So, so, so your age group really is a problem. Yeah, we saw that. That's very interesting. And also, and also because they're younger, if we fix their habits now, they'll have more of a lasting effect. Fix so. a nice point. So then I wanted to also just ask for clarification on the, on the bag thing. It also says, as an incentive, if you bring this in, you get something. Oh, um, yeah, so that was an idea that the, the designer had kicked out to us oh. um, that we then oh, nice. went back and said, no thanks, we okay. want to keep it as simple as possible. Perfect, because I was going to say, that yeah. sounds very complicated. So. Yeah, that's yeah. why we were like, and the chance I'm going to keep down. the CVX bag and punch on it and put it in. It's not going to happen, yeah. I like your answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, designers do that. <laughs> so then can I also just um, follow more generally, and I think this is really cool. Um, I very much like how you, you have explored some different areas of emotion in your different slogans. Mm -hmm. um, I also love the finish strong. I, I think that's great. I like having something that is both altruistic, so it helps to save other people's lives because it's that's surprisingly motivating for a lot of people. And then other times, talking about how it's your own health, you know, finish strong, don't settle for half healthy. I think that would be really cool. So one selfish, I mean, appropriate selfish one. <laughs> I do want to just give a bit of feedback on the one, like imagine dying from a common cold. <laughs> that, that, yeah. No, no, so I, I mean, I, I, I kind of love it. To be, okay. Uh, but I do want to give us feedback. If it's on all CVS bags, as opposed to the labels are targeted to people who look at the box, right, the bags are, 
95% of them are not going to be free antibiotics. And I look at that as the AIDS, because yes, anybody who's got immunosuppressant disease is living with that, and their friends are dying from it. So I wouldn't go there. That was an earlier rendition that we actually, we had this one, and then we had this one, which is, um, yeah, I'll for you guys. Uh, these are both sort of the more negative messaging. We decided we wanted to go a more positive route. Mm -hmm. um, and this yeah. one's like actually scientific guide, because but <laughs> <laughs> we had some issues, but it's, we just like the design, so we put yes. it up. Yeah, okay, very helpful. Yeah, so that was more for the visual aspect. We liked how that would look. Oh, it looks fantastic. That's all Kate. Kate is Kate our is resident artist. Surveys. You're talking to pharmacists. You picked up the phone. You talked to CVS distributor. Outstanding. Just the fact that you understand the supply chain. There was a group last semester who hit a wall because they got confronted with that issue. Where does it fit into our supply chain? They were asked that by Coca-Cola. They never could answer. And the project, right? You guys thought through all of that. Plus, you learn from other campaigns. It was wonderful to hear you talk about um, tobacco-free kids. Um, I, I like the fact that you haven't answered the question, why you? Why are you guys coming to them with this, right? Why aren't professionals coming to them? It's you because you're the age group that's, that, that's causing part of the problem, but you're also part of the age group that can help solve the problem. Great answer. Um, and also, you didn't cling to ideas. I know you guys shifted throughout the semester. You, you, you didn't, didn't have a, you might have had a favorite, but you let it go, and you kept moving along to ideas until you got to some more. So all that was great. Let me just start probing some of these things, okay? So on, on the surveys, you said you've, you've already, did I hear you right? You've already had 300 responses to the surveys? 386, I think. So how did you select the people that you yeah. sent to Who's who? being surveyed? So how did you Facebook. select the people who's, who would, I just want more info no, about Facebook. We literally, we, we, we made a survey, we set it out on Facebook, and we were like, we're going to fail our class if you don't answer this, and all of our friends like wrote back. Okay. So we, had, we asked for the age breakdown as well. Um, so that we could know, and like most of them are in that sort of 18 to 24 year old range. Uh, we have a like a third of them that are more in the like 25 to 30. So, and then so at, you, at, at 300, you're starting to build up big enough numbers you can actually draw some preliminary conclusions. So, is there anything that's starting to emerge about the slogans that you've chosen? Um, yeah, um, actually, surprisingly, because we were expecting people more to gravitate towards the like it's going to cost you a lot of money and it's going to cost you your health. Um, but the ones that have consistently been most favored were it'll save, like it'll help with the world's problem with antibiotic resistance and it'll help save your family's life. I do have a direct follow-up question to, to that. Um, are you collecting demographic data on the survey? Yes. Because, I mean, sending out on Facebook getting 300 responses is excellent, but there is a self-selection bias to people who are in your social networks or your network's network yeah. and have regular access to Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So you, that there's, as long as you recognize that there's some limitation to the conclusions we can draw. Do you have um, age, we have race, we probably, I felt like it put them in a little much to say, ask them like, to do socioeconomic type thing. Um, but this is also a supplement to an actual study that we have, um, which has uh, like generalized data from a large sample. Um, so we just wanted to see from our like network, what their reaction would be to our specific campaign and our specific. So let me ask you a question about the specific. So, so I'm guessing this is actually prize territory, right? Yeah. This, this model, and, and so there is. You know, CVS clearly uses it for branding. They put them in what they wanted to be reinforced because that's something everybody's going to see when they stick their phone. But there's also these instructions: open, push, turn, close. I don't need those instructions, but they must be there for some reason, right? So, whether a lawyer determined that that has to be on, I have no idea. But um, have you had the conversation yet? Uh, it'd be nice if you know before you go and talk to CBS whether there's some obligation to putting some of this information on the top. No, we haven't. No. Okay. okay. Also, like if you, what if your, what you say on top there gives a direction that conflicts with the label itself? Is there, any, is there ever a case where someone gets more antibiotics like, than their need to take? The doctor says, like, oh, take the rest are for if you get another UTI or something? Like, well, I, don't, I have no idea. Like, is there a case you say, like, do you Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a terrible <laughs> doctor. <laughs> so, but, but, so I, I don't know. I'm asking, are you certain enough that, like, if everyone says yes, you can put, you're going to put labels on there that 
convey that you should take everything in the bottle. Yes. And that like there's never gonna be any instance where the label says something else that doesn't convey to take everything. I've the heard bottle. that done with like pain pills, where they give more pain pills than you might need, but with antibiotics that should not happen. Is, isn't this an issue with the bag idea? Right. So I, they use one bag. Right. Yeah. The bag is generic across everything, so it would disrupt how they do their business if they have to like select one antibiotic bag um, versus one for any any other. Which is why we avoided that for that exact reason. Um, we wanted to make sure the messaging was clearly about antibiotics is the best way to target that. You know, that's something we thought about and we sort of, that's why we didn't want to do generic, like it's really important that you take all of your pills all the time and wanted to be very clear about it being about antibiotics because, yeah, we don't want you to feel like you're obligated to take all of the Vicodin and you feel better, like, please stop. <laughs> so. Can I actually follow up on this line of question? So it's, if I understood you correctly, you're, you're aiming the bag idea for CVS, but the sticker idea is only going through local pharmacists, is that right? Mm -hmm. So maybe for the bottle sticker, the question is not about CVS's like legal constraints or preferences, but about how local druggists will consider their relationship with That's big pharma or whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. does like, you know, does Joe Henderson's pharmacy down the street put his supply in danger by covering over producers, products, instructions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll have yeah, to answer that. I'm just yeah. raising that, like, think yeah. about it. Like, you can't yeah. really answer that. And it's that. great that you're in conversation with the pharmacist. Yeah. 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 Can I focus? When you David said something about, um, if I heard you right, the pharmacist, well, at least one of the pharmacists responded by telling you that they have stickers that say the same thing. So what are their stickers right now, and where are they putting them? So that was um, actually Georgetown Hospital Pharmacy. Uh, yeah. No, I, mean, I, I actually yeah. took the meeting, though. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's why I'm not trying to, yeah. yeah. Um, the, with Georgetown Hospital Pharmacy, we, we called up and we spoke to like the manager of the pharmacy who said, basically, we think it's cool, but we already have something on our sticker that says it's important that you finish the bottle. So we don't really need it. Um, do, so do you know where that appears on the label? So it's it's like printed on the label. Um, and our thought was that once we have a good prototype of the sticker, we could yes. go it's and on, say, look, yeah. it is. So we could go and say, look, this is different than what you're doing, and get their attention. Yeah. So I've never noticed it. Right. So that's just something right there. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're, they're with you that this is an important message, but they just feel like they're already doing They feel it's redundancy, so we thought the best way to um, approach them again was with something that shows that it's not, as opposed to being like, no, no, please listen to us, so. Okay. Which is what, so like, um, and the rest of the fast hand, talk about this, what you guys are gonna deliver in a few weeks for the final project, but it seems like a lot of the stuff that I would want to see are the things that you say that you're going to do. I know, like some things you're waiting for different relationships to mature with pharmacists or whatever, but um, all the designs we're talking about with the bottles and getting these to a different point where you can take them and not just sketch on, like that, um, I would I would like to see it right now, but like at the very least by the end of the semester, we see more than just pencil sketches on things. And, like see the things that you're talking about. Most of the things I've heard, the ideas sound really awesome, but they're all by, and we're going to, and we're going to design this, we're going to design that, we're going to have this social media campaign, we're going to do that. Like, there's a lot of stuff that you can do right now, and are expecting some next steps, right? And even like the, like testing the, doing a survey to get feedback, I'm not sure exactly what the question's on, but um, that's never going to be as effective as prototyping it and getting it out, like no data that you show a pharmacist is going to convince them to put the stickers on when they already think that they have a, something on the label that says it versus actually bringing in a prototype with a label or a sticker on top of it. Something more uh, high fidelity though. So can we say pick one of them, make the stickers, or and then carry them in uh, or however many? Yeah. We talked about this in the class consultation too, right? Like I was suggesting you can sketch up a bunch of different versions of these, but at least bring one or two glossy versions to the local pharmacists, right? Because like, part of their questions will be about like quality. I'm like, does it stick? <laughs> yeah. Does it well, yeah. We had yeah. some problems with trying to actually get them done by like, um, <laughs> we worked Sunday and yesterday on trying to get like the actual like um, label maker to print them out <laughs> and having some issues with that, so we decided 
our best shot. We wanted to focus on the actual, like, our presentation of the credit, and so... Yeah. Which is um, great, it's just like for two weeks. For yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, no, that is a, a so issue okay. that we're definitely... What are you gonna do about size? Let's, you know, how do you... Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were gonna do, as you say, some glossy prototypes to take to discuss with the pharmacies, yeah, and then we were just gonna say, can we see your bottle? We'll order it to the size that works for you. Cool. Ask for something if I give you some bottles. I was gonna say, I bet if you walked in and said, what are your three most, you know, common bottle sizes, they just say here. Yeah. And antibiotics are gonna be pretty much the same bottle size, because you never get, you know, a yeah. hundred antibiotics. Yeah. I think that is amazing. Um, so a few things um, that are more on the line of suggestions, but maybe you've thought of them. Have you talked to George Institute Health? They don't just they use the Georgetown Hospital. Thank right. you. Have um, <laughs> you talked to CVS about if they end up going with uh, the bag, uh, joining uh, on their CVS pharmacy online? I mean, I can imagine the sticker being a really cool graphic design on the web, and then having to. Mm -hmm. Um, so a finish strong, strong in, you yeah. know, could be a really, and then, then you can do more background information. And one thing I really mm -hmm. like about the whole approach you guys are taking is that it is about, it's a, it's a health campaign, it's not education or information giving. So less is more, which is what I see here. People will tune out learning a lot about it, but they will absorb if you're presenting it a certain way. And the third thing is, the, the other thing I might suggest one of you try to do during the next two weeks is check in with somebody from public health, and I can help with contacts, maybe over at Johns Hopkins. Um, so this is kind of getting back to the, the issue about sociodemographics. Um, so these seem really great to me, so I think they're just going to give you probably the all clear. But there are people who really specialize in what subpopulations who have earned mistrust of medicine might think of various campaigns. So you really want to do your due diligence on that. And maybe they can give you a thumbs up and you can do that. So, so much of your work has been based on, on research, survey, it's terrific. I, I love hearing that. Um, but one thing we didn't talk about yet is, is how you settled on this positive, you call it the bold and positive approach, right? So there's, there's two generic approaches you can take in advertising, fear, bold and positive. You went bold and positive. So, so what made you tilt that way? Was it just your instincts or did you base that on some other campaigns that were successful? There was, I think, multiple reasons. If I, one of them is just um, working with pharmacies. They're not going to want you to associate negative things with their product. So they're not going to, like one of the things we were talking about kind of as a joke in the first crit was, you know, like antibiotic resistance, don't finish this, and your like, grandma's going to die because like they're in a population that's more susceptible to getting infections. Um, so, so on that particular point, so is that yeah. something you discuss with pharmacists, or you're just, you just assume that they, they want to stay away from something that's negative and fear? That was pure assumption. So yes. We can, Instant, we can okay. discuss with them. And you said other, there were other reasons why you went this route of bold and positive over some of the other Yeah, reasons. I mean, you guys are the rhetoric guys. I mean, we could always, you know, we actually, um, in our first uh, <coughs> class trip, me and Michael talked about uh, having, like, the death scare. You can, like, you know, even lose money at that point, which is definitely a valid point. But I feel like we want to go on a more positive route because when you think of medication, you want to get better, right? You don't associate it with, like, like um, um, she said, with like negative words that deal with you know getting like worse or being like under some kind of stress. So um, it's a possibility we could actually you know even make students about that. But I feel like our route was more of a positive route because I feel like it inspired you more to to be better, to get better. Um, maybe we can speak more about. Mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know what you. No, so it sounded like instinct that would drive you this direction. Or is there some some other campaign that like, did bold and positive that you thought was particularly successful? No, most of the the sort of public health campaigns that we ran across that were really acclaimed were actually more negative, but they were all about like trying to disincentivize somebody from an action. So like, don't smoke because you're gonna kill yourself and your children, and there were all these horrifying graphic images about that, right? Recycle because, like, or don't throw away your trash. They were all sort of phrased like, don't do this. And so we, um, that, I mean, we, well, so that's sort of a contradiction, right? So you're saying that you, you have recognized that fear has worked in a number of these campaigns, yet despite that, you went with your instinct and went bold and positive. Why? Well, part of, I mean, that's in the <coughs> Facebook survey. People uh, that have 
that was spotted in was again self-selecting. There's uh, some caveats there, but their motivations seem to be primarily positive. Um, this is something that doctors are prescribing to them, and uh, once again, I mean, we'll be more than happy to talk to pharmacies more about um, going negative, but when it comes to medication, I mean, you already spoke about some people's inherent distrust with medicine and stuff like that, that um, framing it in a negative light would be a much tougher sell to get it out there than going positive. And then on some of our other designs that have more like information, there is some scary information on there to do that, but we want people to associate antibiotics as like a good thing that this is gonna get you better and not like a better be scared if you don't finish Can things. I just weigh in on Slake's question here? Because it's an empirical issue, what motivates people? You can talk and guess and think and they're all okay. It's an empirical question and there's a great literature on this. And but my understanding of the literature, I don't, I don't specialize in this though, I pretend I do, totally supports what you guys are, so your instincts may be right, but I think Slake's right to push for some empirical basis so that when you're selling it, you can say, look, here's the study from Harvard School of Public Health that says if you go with fear, people go to cognitive dissonance, and if you go with aspiration, people open up. So, and again, I can help steer you to some of the literature if that's helpful, but send one of you to the library in the next two weeks and it'll make your case sing. But the, the survey data was doing that too, because that you had that direction before. If you're asking actually what in the process, what drove you to it, from what I saw, like the best explanation you give is on the sign outside of the store. It was like the no, squiggle. There's one. No, no, I know. I'm saying I agree. Like that to sell it, to pitch it. But like there is an answer to what actually I think to what actually like drove or the answer to drove. It's like it's there's no one thing because I would watch you guys go through a bunch of different iterations, a bunch of different things. And I don't think there's one point. There is you guys weighed evidence for different things. You were doing different things. We had a product. Are you just weighing on that? I think the point is, you want large N, you want large data samples yes. that are sociodemographically diverse to decide the empirical question of what motivates human animals. And, and there are examples of really bold and positive public health campaigns. Even you started to, you, you went negative, but you started to cite recycling, which has been pitched in a very bold, positive way. I mean, you can in, you know, see images of green fields and windmills and you know, a, a clean future, right? Yeah. So, I mean, even from the, the example that you started to cite, you can come up with other ones, but I completely agree with, with Maggie and Slate that find some of those, find the empirical data, and then find some examples so that you can say, look, it's worked in this case, it, it's likely to work in that case. Okay. I could add to that. One of the um, part of your analysis that started to emerge in your comments a moment ago um, is that it's maybe not just about bold and positive versus negative. It's about what you're trying to encourage people to do, like an affirmative, sort of like an agential action, right? Uh, as opposed to like no longer doing something. So the question isn't just that the campaign's bold and positive. It's like if you want people to stop doing something, is it more likely they'll stop doing that from a negative campaign? But if you want them to do something more active, which works, right? So just be aware of that dynamic when you're looking at that research. Wait, but aren't you guys aware of that? So that's so what this is a little unfair because the question didn't start out as what, sh why should you do positive versus negative? The question that was from Slate was, what drove you to that? What are the points in it? And so I've heard from you guys like the studies that you mentioned or something you mentioned about this. You had some evidence for it. So I agree with the, like like selling it. Of course you should. Sell it really well, like have data, like have research to back up why you went, why you are doing a positive campaign, positive language. But to the question of like what actually has happened in the past few months that drove you there, like that's what it sounds like you were starting to try to answer first and struggling to, and I suggest that's because it's, was this Google? Uh, so I have some comments on the design choices, that's more of my area of expertise. Um, as a juror, but uh, so I like I like aesthetically the look of these um, like the CVS bag mockups, and it does look like something CVS would put on their bag. But I think that's a bad choice because then are we saying people are ignoring things they think come from CVS? 
So like I was thinking, you know, if you're thinking in this, and, and people don't like CBS. Um, so if, and, but I think like you said, it's an opportunity they're already going through like a rebranding, it sounds like, um, to do something drastically different. So the, I was thinking, but this gets back to the debate of positive versus negative like messaging, like the things that are effective are like on um, cigarette packs that are like the death, the skull and crossbones or like, I feel like in Europe they're like even more extreme, but that, it doesn't work. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've read a number of studies that say that the like really graphic images on cigarette packages work like once and then people just sort of check But out. you still like, I feel like, so, catches your attention. It catch, yeah, so well, I think what I'm trying to get is it catches your attention and um, is clearly separate from the, the person you're procuring this from. Like you don't um, associate like uh, those like skull and crossroads with like well maybe, I don't know but um, uh, I think to that like you've said with these bags you have you know two seconds to catch someone's attention so if it's the same red as CBS and the same like graphic design and aesthetic I'm like oh it's just another ad for something. Um, so I think if it's, it, it needs to be those like two big words or like the finish strong like is in that sort of category. But then if it's just finish strong, finish what? I don't, like if I don't think of it, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Finish strong, okay, I'm not running a marathon this weekend, thanks though. Give me a QR code. But like, um, so I think what, uh, what someone alluded to too is like, Maybe there needs to be like an accompanying campaign that's like online or elsewhere that you can drive traffic to to get people more information and really the facts. So I think it's important to get that hook initially that should be different from you know un 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 unexpected, uh, but that there there would also need to be some sort of supporting material too. If I could respond to that. Um, one thing that we were having trouble with was that, so like the reason that cigarette packs have that is because it's government mandated, it's not the companies doing it, and it's kind of against the company's interest to have that on there, <laughs> so that's why it wouldn't be like their own brand, yeah. whereas CVS and antibiotic adherence is something that they're trying to like work towards, so we thought that it'd be more likely, because we're not trying to get the government to ma mandate something, we want CVS to do it, so that's why we wanted to do it kind of in their style, yeah. but I see what you mean about kind of just phasing out. And even though it is kind of a blank canvas right now, which is why we wanted to use it, um, it still would be, you know, it would look kind of like red and have those. Do you have suggestions on how so like, I, think, I mean, I think it can, it can still be in their, it can still fit with their branding. But if, I mean, I think it's more about establishing something that's like, this is a CVS like PSA, this isn't us caring about you coming back to buy stuff from our like pharmacy or the store. Like this is just this is a sort of separate issue we want to address like as an organization that we recognize this is beyond, you know, just filling more prescriptions. This is something that's like for the public good. So like it should, yeah, I mean there should be some theme to connect it to CBS, but I think should there be so can I can I comment on what you guys are doing just frame this conversation, it sounds like you're trying to use the design to do two things in this case. One, sell CVS on actually, like, so to pitch to CVS. Two, that could be effective in my like, sense. Yeah, well, no, to be effective at, like, in convincing consumers that like, they're probably not the same thing. All right. Or maybe they are, like, but they're, I don't know if you, you may not be able to do either well if you're trying to do both. Why don't we just bring both into the meeting and let CVS decide which one they like? Because they're not like, shit that looks like they're <laughs> Yeah, but, but for my, I mean, I, uh, I <coughs> agree with everything that you're saying about making it bold and making it stand out, but just from a pure pitching standpoint, if you walk into a meeting clearly understanding the CVS brand, you're going to get far farther with them um, than you will 
coming in and trying to convince them, oh, this is, this is a PSA that you should care about because it's important and everything. Coming in saying, hey, listen, we've done our research on your brand. We know where you're at. We know where you're going. And we think we have an idea that fits with that brand, you know, with that brand image and everything. I think from a pitching standpoint, that's the way to go. And that's what I would recommend. My only comment on the design is, um, if CVS doesn't buy it, you could turn around and pitch this to Target because this looks like Target branding to me. And Target does stuff like this. <laughs> they already like Target, but so Sorry. Anyway, that makes me think that they might not. It might be the opposite. In fact, they might like feel like, oh wait, so you want us, our brand, without any of our research or legal team on it, to adopt something that looks like our brand and everything else, versus like sell us real estate on, sell another organization or effort that's not their brand. That if it's gets in some sort of trouble or if it, it like gets bad PR that is not as directed back to them because they're just offering real estate on a bag. They're not going to do Wait, it without approval. Like yeah. So, yes, have a meeting with CVS and see what happens. Fine. Um, where are you with that meeting? I think I sent an email so we, uh, No, we drafted the email and then we decided to hold off on sending it until right after this because it was we drafted it yesterday. And, uh, and it was one day's delay and get some feedback. So give me the favor of, of uh, you can be CV on that so we know when it goes out. Okay, and of course. And then follow up in a couple just let me know. Um, what, I like that you did a lot of research about CVS, which is terrific, and, and we have a little bit of time so to ask about it. You said that CVS has a new campaign targeting adherence. So what did you learn about that campaign? What, what's going on with that right now? Um, in their CSR report, which is like a comprehensive report that they put out every year, uh, their most recent one, they're, I guess, putting out the 2014 one right now, but 2013 is their most recent that's been published. Um, and they're... They have, it's really long, but they have um, a whole page on um, why adherence is important and then what they're specifically doing to target adherence. Um, and all of it so far um, is targeted at chronic disease. Um, and I've seen, actually I saw on like a, just a little pop-up yesterday, a new like campaign they have that's like, you're with one day and it's like the one day you find out that you're gonna have to take medicine the rest of your life. And like, they're really focusing on that. Um, and we think that we could kind of bridge a gap in their so what campaign. Mm -hmm. so, so what is it they're doing? So, so they show, they've demonstrated the concern in what you read, but what are, what are the steps they're actually taking? Right. They're working with doctors and, and how they prescribe. They're kind of big on that one. Um, they're doing stuff with general like information and kind of trying to help people that are going to have to take medicine the rest of their lives. And they're doing stuff with, um, they want to re- like do stuff with their labels basically, but they ah, okay, that's where so I far so, I don't so, know what they've done. They, they, they say it was like a bullet point on their report okay, that they well, haven't. If I'm not mistaken, part of it is refill reminders too, isn't it? Yeah, like, like if you've you gotten yeah. a refill, they'll remind you and say, hey, you should be out here soon. Do you have yeah. emails or? Right. Uh, they text and they call. I get texts. So, so, so they have access to the people who are getting their prescriptions by email? Only if the patient says but just, okay. yeah. so there, are, there are other avenues than just the box up. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, nice. I've got, so I noticed on a couple of these, um, it says finishing this bottle will help save 23,000 lives every year. <laughs> Why not just say 100,000 or like a million? I mean, that could be more motivating. Because 23,000 are the number of people that die every year. Is that from, in the United States? Yes, in, in the United States. States. So why not expand it? And, or, or why not just fudge it? I mean, <laughs> I mean this isn't an education campaign. Over time, right? Yeah. We're not giving them a test. We're trying to get them to do something. That does actually save lives. So why, why wouldn't you guys fudge or you know, use fuzzier numbers? Okay, so again, I'm going up here instinct and not any research on this one. Um, but I pay much more attention to specific numbers than I do to large scale, like one billion, one billion. I'm like, what is that? while it's like 23,000, I'm gonna at least be like, why that number? Like, that's a very specific, but I, that, that's not, like that's me just talking right now, so I can't back that up with anything. Uh, we've also purposefully steered away from some of the higher estimates that even we think like look funny <laughs> because um, different groups have different estimates. And I don't know if it's because like a lot of us have like a science-y background, but when we see something that doesn't look right or seems high, like our natural tendency is to be like, I don't, I don't think they're quite telling me the truth or something like that. Can, can but I say hypothetical? If you guys did the research and it just turned out that putting a higher number would be more effective, 
would you then use it, or would you still have reasons not to, not to do it? If the number was true, or if the number was false? Not true. If it just was this, this is Socrates on rhetoric. He's <laughs> <laughs> waiting for you to say an answer. Are you guys are trying to save lives? I am in the biologist class. Right? Thank oh. you, speak <laughs> Eyes on the prize. I think. I think. Pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Very 